Hello everybody, I'm Igor. This is Paolo. We're Sepultura and you guys are watching The Virus and we're going to be talking about a lot of different things. News on Sepultura, you know, everything that's going on with the guest. You guys are going to be watching some uh, live footage from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And also, we're going to talk about something that we take very serious, which is Jiu-Jitsu. It's a martial art that it's a combine of a Brazilian and Japanese martial arts. But now, you guys are going to check it out, the virus mix. Hey, everybody, this is Igor and Paulo again. And now we're going to be talking about Jiu-Jitsu, mainly Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, which is a special kind of fight. It's a combination of uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and the traditional Japanese Jiu-Jitsu, which we've been practicing for a little more than four years. Paulo started first. First he was into Aikido, right? Aikido and Judo. And Judo. And then we got into Jiu-Jitsu through the Gracie family by you know watching a lot of their videos and a lot of their conquers which have a lot to do with Sepultura also. It's a family that come out of Brazil and uh, show their style and show their pride on what they believe all over the world. So that's one of the main reasons that interest us in Jiu-Jitsu. As far as, as we know, Jiu-Jitsu started in India many, many years ago. And uh, they were used by Indian monks by traveling where they will be attacked about people to rob them and steal their money and sometimes even kill them. And the techniques of Jiu-Jitsu really make the person uh, sometimes not really use violence, but in a way that you can get that person immobilized or even uh, get that person out of out of their mind by choking them and, and doing things like that. So they the monks didn't want to, to kill those persons that approach them, but really just get them out of their way. So that was a peaceful way of doing that, instead of using weapons and end up, you know, creating more and more violence. Jiu-Jitsu for me means a lot in terms of uh, not only defending myself, but also keeping my mind and body very focused, like especially being on tour and being on this whole so-called like rock and roll life you can get very lost into you know drinking and drugs and I don't do any of that stuff so for me especially it's, it's very important to keep myself busy and jiu-jitsu keep, really keeps my mind really sane because I always spend besides the energy that I spend on stage usually I also spend some more energy on something that I really love so like the main philosophy for me of jiu-jitsu it really includes all that very useful for small guys and for women, for children, so even for big guys, you know, you can better, but that's the main main thing, you know, you can practice without really get hurt. There's a lot of technique involved and there's no you know, really a physical exchange of contact. So that's what I like about it. And it's, it, it works very well, the way they teach is it's very realistic, you know, it's no Nothing like uh, you see in the movies. Hey everybody, we're back here. Paulo and Igor, we're Sepultura. And now you guys are gonna get a little more deep into what's going on with the band today. Our new family, new member in the band, Derek, new album, and pretty much everything that is going on with Sepultura, you're gonna find out right now. We put everything together and did this special gig, you know, it wasn't a part of the Roots Tour or either Against Tour, it was just a specific gig really for us to to represent a new start, you know, in this new phase, you know, the first of the tour.
Since Max left, everything pretty much turned to different ways. We, we spent eight months, nine months just working as a trio, just me, Paul, and Igor, and then start looking for new managers and, and stuff like that, trying to regroup and rebuild Sepultura. I think the press really wanted to, to feed that war, you know, because that's what they want to do. But uh, we, we kept away from that. We weren't interested in doing that, you know. So I guess in, in, the, in the end was the right decision because we really could focus on only on music and without losing energy on other shit. Oh, 
throughout the times. I thought about changing the name or even quitting music and stuff, but we never made any decisions really when we were very confused and, you know, were very difficult to make clear decisions, you know, so we kept playing and the music was growing as much Sepultura, you know, as possible, really, we felt was very Sepultura, so we decided to keep the name and keep going as a band together as Sepultura. complete whatever we were missing, you know, in lyrics and arrangements. 
then I moved to New York and did various other bands. And the last band I was in was called Alpha Jerk that put out a CD. So it's basically like a hardcore background, playing for a lot of hardcore bands and punk bands growing up from when I was 16 on. I mean, I had different experiences from these guys, so I, I just kept an open mind, really, and tried to relate to, you know, try to figure out how these lyrics work for me. And so it was really easy. I mean, as I said, we got along really well, so, I, I mean, there were a lot of similar things that were going on with them and me. Ah! Uh -huh. 
I have to say I was really nervous for I think all of us because we hadn't played in so long and uh, I just wanted to pretty much get it out of the way and so I figured once that show was over with I'm not going to be nervous anymore. <laughs> And then we played a show in uh, Sao Paulo, which was amazing. And uh, that was the biggest show, it was 20,000 people. And it was the fourth show that I did, so it went from 300 to 20,000. <laughs> in the Chavantes tribe on stage, Coffin Joe, Carlinhos Brown, you know, people that work with Sepultura uh, in different times, you know, and made a big, you know, part of our history.
here, Paulo and Igor, Sepultura. And you guys got to see a lot, you know, through this whole show about Sepultura, our lives and our hobbies and different things. So for us, we really enjoy talking about those things besides music. And I hope you like it. And I hope to see you soon on tour. Thanks a lot. My name is Andreas Kisser, guitar player from Sepultura. And I'm Paolo, the bass player. 
we are here to talk about our new album that is coming out in March, Nation, and uh, about everything else concerning that. Brasiliens Rocknational in Sepultura veröffentlichen, nachdem sie gerade frisch von Rock in Rio zurückgekommen sind, nach 14 Jahren Bandgeschichte ihr erstes Konzeptalbum. Nation, die zweite Platte mit Sänger Derek Green, präsentiert die Band musikalisch so vielschichtig wie noch nie. It's uh, actually the first time that we have uh, a concept since the, the very beginning when we start writing the music. And uh, this concept is like uh, we are creation creating this uh, utopic new nation um, is something that is very rich like visually and a lot of uh, of things to talk about like you know we're gonna have a flag an anthem and every song is connected to one topic which is the creation of this nation it's a utopic nation because it's a nation that has no no borders no wars no guns religious freedom and something that never happened before and For sure, it'll take a long time <laughs> if if it will happen some one day. But uh, the main reason is uh, just to have like a an inspiration, really, to write the music, you know, for a new album. Sepultura, die seit jeher für farbenfrohe, inhaltlich brachiale Videoclips stehen, sind bereits unter Hochdruck mit der visuellen Umsetzung des Plattenkonzepts beschäftigt. We're working on a video uh, right now for Sepul Nation, which is the first song. And uh, probably gonna do all in Brazil with the Brazilian uh, crew, you know, very, very good Brazilian crew, and uh, it's gonna be very interesting, very visually effect. Nur, dass man mit Nation erstmalig ein Album im brasilianischen Heimatland aufnahm, diesmal wirkte auch Sänger Daryl, der auf der letzten CD Against erstmalig Max Cavalera ersetzte, nachhaltig am ganzen Aufnahmeprozess mit. Since the, the writing and recording was done in Rio and uh, mixing was done in New York City. Daryl has been more involved in this time and he's been in Brazil with us. And there was no really reason to be outside of Brazil. And it's, it's really a good feeling to be at home with your family, friends, you know, and, and the vibe and everything else around you. you know, so give us a lot of new energy, charging the batteries for, for a new album to go out on tour. And, and Especially because me, Paul and Igor are playing together for so long, uh, we have that I identity flowing naturally between us. And now that Derek's coming, you know, with uh, his influence, his writing, and especially his wide range, as you said, you know, like the, the, the beautiful open range that he has, like only, not only screaming, but also singing and, and talking and uh, performing in a lot of different ways. I think that's the main biggest influence that we had for this album. Die Menschen unter euch, die es jetzt schon nicht erwarten können, sollten sich trotz des nahenden Sommers warm anziehen, denn im Seppo-Lager schmiedet man schon große Livepläne. We have the plans now to go to United States from beginning of March and April. And the manager has been working on dates for Europe, so we should be coming to some, for some festivals. Definitely, and definitely come for a tour, but uh, we don't have the right dates yet. They're working on it. So pretty soon we should be seeing the dates. Check the website, sepultura.com.br. Hopefully to see everybody on the road here in Deutschland. <laughs>